Hello everyone, welcome to Vishesh Educational Videos. So in this video, I am explaining deadlock characterization. So in that, I am explaining necessary conditions for deadlock to happen. So this is the part 1 of deadlock characterization. So I am explaining the part 2 of the deadlock characterization in the next video. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. To get the notification of my new videos, please click the bell icon and please don't forget to share with your friends. So let me begin the explanation of deadlock characterization. So before that you need to understand what is a deadlock first. So yeah, I will explain this deadlock in a very simple way, see here. So here I am going to explain this, I am considering three processes process 1, process 2, process 3 right and each processor is using a resource type USB so right guys so you can see here process 1 right process 1 is requesting a resource from process 3 in the same way process 2 is requesting a resource from process 1 Next, process 3 is requesting a resource from process 2. But, you can see here, these three processes are in a deadlock state. How? How? You can see, for a process 1 to give the resources to process 2, right? Process 1 should complete its execution, right? But, process 1 can't complete its execution because process 1 is waiting for the resource from process 3 right process 3 can't give a resource to process 1 because process 3 is waiting for the resource from process 2 process 2 can't give a resource to process 3 because process 2 is waiting for a resource from process 1 So that's why each process is holding the resource that is needed by the another process. So here, each process, uh, so every process can't continue their operation, right? So process one uh, can also, uh, process one can't continue its operation, process two can't continue its operation, process three can't continue its operation because each of the process holds the resources that is, right? each of the process requesting the resources that is held by the another process right that's why this is a deadlock each process is requesting for the resource that is held by the another process so they can't continue their operation so this is a deadlock now what is a deadlock characterization deadlock characterization means here we are describing a deadlock using four conditions right so if these four conditions holds good simultaneously that is very important if these four conditions satisfied if these four conditions is going to satisfy is going to be satisfied simultaneously then i can say a deadlock may arise but i can't give the 100% guarantee here deadlock may arise if these four conditions going to be satisfied simultaneously right deadlock may arise if these four conditions satisfied simultaneously but I can't give 100% guarantee right now we will see this four necessary conditions that should hold good for deadlock to happen right see so first is mutual exclusion mutual exclusion means only one process should use the resource at a time only one process should use the resource at a time right guys so if another process requests the resource that is uh, right if another process requests the resource 
for example if the new process request the resource that is held by the old process right you can't give that resource to the new process until the old process is going to release that resource right so that new process should wait until the old process releases it that means at a time only one process can use the resource right suppose if you allow two or more process or multiple process to use the same resource at a time what happens see here for example i'm considering two processes here p1 p2 and both the processes are using a single printer here so the output from p1 and the output from process p2 is going to be combined because both processes are using the same resource printer right so the output can be combined the output is a mixture of both the processes so practically that is impossible you can't share the resource same resource between multiple processes simultaneously you can't do that practically it is impossible right so mutual exclusion means you need to allow only one process to use the resource at a time so if you remove the mutual exclusion deadlock may not happen if mutual exclusion is there then deadlock may arise getting guys right now next is hold and wait so hold and wait means process is already holding one resource but it is waiting for additional resources that is going to be held by other processes right so getting so process is already using a resource one resource but it is waiting for additional resources from other processes right so this may lead to the deadlock if you remove the hold and wait then deadlock may not happen so now what is hold and wait see here hold and wait means you can see process p1 is holding the resource r1 but it is requesting for the resource r2 in the same way process p2 is holding the resource r2 but it is requesting for the resource r1 this is hold and wait right so it is already using the resource but it is uh, waiting for the additional resources that is held by the other process so this is hold and wait you should remove this to remove the deadlock otherwise the deadlock will happen right so next no preemption so no preemption means so see here preemption first you need to understand what is a preemptive scheduling non preemptive scheduling preemptive scheduling means you can right deallocate the resource in the middle of the task no preemption means the uh, you can't deallocate the resource that resource should be released by one uh, the process that is holding the resource after completion of its task so here no preemption means see here you can't uh, uh, preempt the resources that means resources can't be deallocated in the middle of the task resources need to be released by that process that is using voluntarily after the completion of its task after the completion of its task getting guys so if no preemption is there that means if you remove preemption that means if you allow the resources to be used or if you allow the resource to be deallocated in the middle you can avoid the deadlock if you don't allow the resource to be released in the middle of the task that means you have to wait until the process that is holding the resource should release it after the completion of its task 
then the deadlock may happen so to avoid the deadlock you should use preemption if you use no preemption then deadlock may arise so next last one circular weight so what is circular weight so to explain this i'm considering three processes here set of three processes p1 p2 p3 and all these three processes are waiting processes so see here here p1 is waiting for a resource held by p2 p2 is waiting for a resource held by p3 p3 is waiting for a resource held by p1 so here i will take this example only here only two processes are there uh, two resources are there no problem uh, same thing applies for this two two resources and two processors also you can see here process p1 right process p1 is waiting for r2 but r2 is held by p2 but p2 is waiting for r1 but r1 is held by p1 so this is the circular weight you can see right so see p2 that is uh, process p1 is waiting for the resource r2 r2 is held by p2 p2 is waiting for the resource r1 but r1 is held by uh, sorry r1 is held by p1 so this is a circular weight right so to remove the deadlock you want to remove the circular weight you should not allow circular weight to happen if circular weight is going to happen along with the remaining three conditions definitely chances are there the process may enter into the deadlock right so understood what is a circular weight right so you should avoid that circular weight to remove the deadlock suppose if these four conditions right satisfied simultaneously definitely uh, more chances are there the deadlock will happen right so that's it guys if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section thank you thank you for watching the video